What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today the Halo TV show has returned. Say what? Come again, Act Man One. Did you say Halo show? Affirmative. It's the winter cringe tingency. May God help us all. The first two episodes of the Halo TV show have released. I watched them so you won't have to. Now the big questions on your mind are probably, is this better than season one? Should I even bother? Does life have any real meaning? Kind of? Maybe? Sort of? For those that want a breakdown of why season one is so bad, well, you can click up up there in the top right. But the quick recap is that Master Chief, AKA Johnny Rings, takes his helmet off every five seconds because fuck you or something. They said they didn't look at the games when making the show. And you know, that's a good, that's a good start. They said, yeah, let's ignore the source material when, when we're making an adaptation. The show itself was in development hell. It has gone through multiple showrunners, I think. Anyways, Master Chief takes his armor off all the time in season one because his balls are super sweaty. Gotta air them out. And at one point, he even takes off all his clothes. You see his ass, thus the name Master Cheeks. He has some Covenant show up from time to time, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, you really want to see this sex scene with Master Chief in a Covenant POW. The show was so bad that I couldn't even finish it. It was like painful to watch. Does Master Chief get naked in season two? So far he hasn't. Many of you will probably be disappointed in this news. Thankfully, Master Chief in season two so far keeps his helmet on during combat and only takes it off when he's not in the suit. So that is an improvement. Now I'm going to give you sort of a spoiler free review. I think these first two episodes have me more intrigued than I was with the first two episodes of season one. You know, they're teasing the fall of Reach. That's not a spoiler that was in the trailers. And you know, maybe that's where this TV show should have started. It seems like they have been trimming the fat of the boring subplots centered around characters people don't really care about. I think overall, these first two episodes were decent. Nothing spectacular, but you know, it bears more resemblance to Halo, which is good, right? But isn't it weird that I have to point that out as, as an improvement, as a positive? That's the thing, whenever I'm watching this show, I can't help but think like, when is this gonna turn into Halo? When is this gonna feel like Halo? And I shouldn't have to ask that question when I'm watching a Halo TV show. Does it, does anybody else feel that way? Like there's a shot in the trailers where the this entire Covenant fleet appears out of the clouds and it's jaw dropping. It's fucking awesome. And then, you know, that, that lasts for a few seconds and that's enough to kind of keep me watching. I don't know, man. It's kind of like, imagine watching the first 10 episodes of Game of Thrones and being like, Okay, when is this gonna feel like a song of ice and fire? When it, when is this gonna feel like what I read in the books? I shouldn't be anticipating for the show to feel like it's based off the media it comes from. If you weren't sold on the show already, this is not gonna entice you further or blow your mind, but it could potentially build to something interesting. So now we're gonna dive into the episodes, spoiler territory, if you care. You skip to the timestamp on screen to avoid spoilers, but the rest of the video is going to pretty much be spoilers, so. So the first episode begins with John, Halo, and Silver Team on a planet called Sanctuary, where the UNSC is here to evacuate this clan of, like, weird shaman people. And I don't know why they keep putting mysticism and shamans into this show. It's like, this isn't Warcraft, man. Get that shit out of here. So there's a group of Marines trapped atop a mountain, and Chief goes to rescue them, and all of a sudden... Look at that, it's the grapple shot from Halo Infinite. I know that thing. Now, oh, this is pretty cool. However, it also makes me confused because like, when did he get the grapple shot? Who gave it to him? Did I miss something? I think a huge issue that season two is going to have to face is that so much of season one was spent on like dumb subplots with characters we didn't like and a lot of scenes that felt like filler. You know, instead of all the wacky and crazy adventures of Quan Ha and Soren, uh, maybe we could get a scene of Master Chief having a suit upgraded. Some guy with the UNSC just walking him through it, how it works. You know how expensive this gear is, son? No. But the way it's implemented, at least right now, it, this grapple shot, it feels like one-off fan service or like a plot device when there should be a scene of Master Chief getting this upgrade. And that's one thing I really love about Attack on Titan is that they go out of their way to explain the technology, you know, the ODM gear, the Thunder Spears, etc. It, it, it adds world building, like real practical elements. Like why does, why do we have this in this show? 
But now we're getting into kind of the rocky territory and not just because this scene takes place on a mountain but because it's so fucking foggy you can't see anything and there's a fight scene with some elites it isn't half bad i love the use of the classic shotgun there's some decent choreography but i don't know why this scene is so foggy it's like i don't know if they're trying to hide poor cgi but that might be it because like whenever the spartans are running it looks kind of weird what the fuck is that hold up why is he so bl why is everything okay well this is kind of cool the hud and everything but why is he so blurry it's one of those things that like you're trying to be immersed in the thing that you're watching and then something on screen is like distracting like why is this so blurry why does why do these movements look unnatural i suppose they are unnatural because they're augmented spartans so maybe they're trying to hide the cgi because there's like two fight scenes and they both take place in like foggy or dark conditions and i get it they want to try to hide the monster right some marines get picked off they get pulled into the fog and die or whatever but then the elites show up and and ignite their energy swords and you can see them perfectly so like why didn't they see the energy swords before and and the same thing happens in the second episode we're in sword base apparently the covenant are on reach the marines are engaging the covenant so like they know the covenant is on reach but for some reason not everybody in the unsc knows this I, anyways so in this scene the commander sends a group of marines into the darkness and i was just sitting there like why are the lights out how come they don't have flashlights like <laughs> turn the fucking flashlight on why are you just walking into the darkness if you think there's an enemy there just stay in the light they're shooting at something they can, don't they not have flashlights or something no where are your flashlights they send a group of marines who die they shoot at something off in the distance but we don't see what then a second squad goes in and then we see the elite show up with the sword and it's like you can't pull that trick twice for me if i'm like sitting there being like wait a minute this doesn't make sense in, in a fight scene that's supposed to be high intense how good is that fight scene really if i'm being pulled out of it by the internal logic of the story does that make sense yeah so like the actual choreography looks pretty good i just i get the sense that they're like trying to hide the cg or the green screen or something you know what i think it is I feel confused when I watch a scene in this show and I don't know like where things are, where I'm supposed to be. I guess I just really don't like the location that they're fighting in, you know? Compared to the first episode where it was like a wide open landscape, you know? That was visually much more clear to me than, than this. I think that's what the problem is. So after killing a few elites, Master Chief rescues one Marine, and then something weird happens. A bunch of other sword elites appear. They ignite their swords. And you're like, oh shit. Okay, that's a pretty cool shot. That's pretty cool. Huh? What? And then they put them away. It was, it was like, yes, Master Chief, we are here. Goodbye. <laughs> That was really confusing to me. And then the planet gets glassed and that was a pretty cool scene as well. Now, one thing that is really awesome is at the title screen, they actually play what sounds like the Halo 2 main menu theme. And mwah, fantastic choice. There are a few moments where there is actually part of the Halo soundtrack in here. I wanna see more of that. I want to hear more of that, I should say. I don't know why they keep putting weird shit in this show. Like, whenever they go to the rubble, it's something just bizarre always happens. They're at, like, this, I don't know, boxing event or something. This lady is dressed up like Willy Wonka. And then she starts choking some guy out and riding him like a horse. Like, uh, uh, what? What the fuck is happening in this show? Why can't this just be a Halo show? So overall, I think the acting is better. The writing is slightly improved but there's still like parts that feel inhuman i do want to point out that the guy who plays Ackerson does a pretty good job and i think i think pablo does a decent chief i think he's doing a better chief this time not having him screaming you know and being unhinged and everything he, he feels more reserved as he should be everyone knows the master chief i wonder if anyone really knows john oh my yeah, fucking god i think the soren subplot and the relationship he has with his kid 
it's not especially compelling. I still feel bored during a lot of the dialogue scenes. So there's a scene where Silver Team and Cobalt Team are like, you know, talking a little smack to each other, which is slightly out of place. But then Riz says this. Suck big ass cream. What? Suck big ass cream? What the fuck kind of insult is that? I'd never heard anybody on this planet ever say that before. You see what I mean? Like there's there's still like weird in human dialogue at certain points and it completely draws me out of the story. There's a couple scenes or moments where like Master Chief and his armor is being used kind of as propaganda by Oni or the UNSC or whoever. And I, I, I think these scenes are compelling because they illustrate a difference between John and the Master Chief as a symbol. We'll continue to win because we have something the enemy does not. We have heroes. Folks need heroes, Chief. To give them hope. So smile, would you? I feel like all of this should have been more of a focus in season one before he had like all these emotional mental breakdowns and whatnot. But you know what? I'll take it. And then Soren follows this like orange haired guy to go find Halsey or something to get the bounty on him or to get revenge for the Spartan training. And then he betrays him. It's like, meh. It's really funny though. <laughs> Is there's, there's a scene that feels like out of Blade Runner or a cyberpunk. This scene felt like those rooms in cyberpunk where you go to like have a virtual lap dance or something. I can't remember the name, but you like plug in a cord and then some digital male or female appears. And he does this for like therapy with Cortana, but I'm not sure if this is Cortana. I mean, it's like, it's a really bizarre scene. I get what they were going for. He's like trying to reconcile with losing Cortana and all that, but it just, it just seemed unnecessarily comical. Then there's like some generic monologue about how monsters are real. Like, like the character is recording lines for a movie trailer or something. And then it's revealed it's Quan Ha. Talking to Soren's kid, convincing him that monsters are real for some reason. It, it's like trying to be epic, mysterious, and foreboding, but it's, it's fucking Quan Ha. <laughs> At least she didn't have much screen time in this. I mean, <sighs> we're not going to get into Quan Ha. The scenes with the Covenant, though, are the best parts of the show. And I don't know why there, there's so much focus on all these other subplots I don't care about, you know? Then in episode two, Sword. Halsey is talking to like some clone lady in a Oni facility. I don't know. She starts having a nosebleed and then she dies. <laughs> and it's really funny. It's <laughs> so Cobalt team were sent on some mission and uh, Chief investigates this a bit more and realizes that they weren't sent off planet somewhere close by the Visegrad relay. And if you played Reach, that's where they encountered the Covenant on Reach for the first time. They took down the relay so they could sneak in and that's where Noble Team finds them. Master Chief deduces that the Covenant are on Reach and he says it and it's like, yes, yes. The Covenant's on Reach. Oh shit. Love that line. There's like, uh, there's this weird subplot again of like Quan Ha being tracked or something. I don't remember this from season one. Uh, she's got like some implant in her ear. I don't know who's tracking her down or why. But again, I just, I don't know what the point of this is. I, like I've been saying, there's too many scenes that feel pointless. We're like, hey, can we, can we refocus on this whole covenant threat? And like, what's going on behind the scenes with Oni? Another thing the show focuses on is how the training and augments uh, have affected the Spartans. These scenes were all right. And then there's a scene where Master Chief is training with Silver Team. And I don't know if it's just me, but when the Spartans move and jump, I can't tell. It's like on the border of being cartoony. I can't tell if it looks cool or cheesy, to be honest. Yeah, there's, okay. So this part is really fucking weird. Master Chief goes to the Marines house that he rescued because apparently she's lying to leadership of that they encountered the Covenant and Sword Elites there. Don't know why she would lie about that, but she did. So Chief goes to her house to talk to her, gets invited inside for dinner. And it, the dialogue here is just bizarre and bad and baffling. One of her brothers asks Chief, what is kill death ratio is in Spartan attack or... Hey, it's your KDR. 
kill death ratio. Oh my fucking god. Come on, man, you don't play Spartan attack? I don't keep score. What what, what the hell is Spartan attack? What is that? <laughs> What's your kill death ratio? What? I don't keep score. It's just, it just feels so unnatural. What why why are you asking this guy who just showed up what his kill death ratio is in some video game that I'm only just hearing about now? Like this is this is like a throwaway joke line, but it it makes me ask more questions than it does make me laugh. It's I don't know. The the way this entire scene plays out is just really fucking weird. But nobody talks like they're a real person in this scene besides Master Chief, I suppose. And then this is where that fight happens underground at Sword Base. Again, which is bizarre because all the lights are off. They don't have flashlights. And guess who's back? Fucking Maki. Oh my God. I thought she was dead. I thought she was killed. Somehow Maki returned. I don't know why they, why bring her back? And then the second episode ends with Maki finding another artifact. And can I just say, I'm so tired of, you know, when sci-fi shows, movies, or video games, they have this artifact MacGuffin. I feel like it is such a tired trope. And I still don't fully understand what these things do or, or what their point is. I mean, to lead them to the location of Halo or whatever. I feel like the whole therapy sessions and the Spartans dealing with the trauma of augmentation and being kidnapped as kids it's like yeah you know that was that was a good plot line in halo 4 it was a little more subtle but master chief struggles with his humanity but that was in the fourth game you know the the biggest issue with the show that still persists is focus we're not focusing on the right things i just think the covenant should be the big major focus we should be diving into their ideology their religion you know we should have scenes where characters are talking about this this alien race and what they want. Why are they here? The threat to humanity's existence isn't really felt a whole lot in season one, but you get a glimpse of that here with the shot of the fleet coming out of the clouds. That's when this feels like Halo. And that's what makes me think, okay, I wanna watch and see where this goes. And again, all the subplots I've, I've brought up only seem to take away the, the urgency, the punch, the steam out, out of how fucked they are how fucked they should be this should all be about the impending threat of the covenant against the human race and its various colonies and planets and as our heroes continue fighting them we see the war take a toll they would start to question their humanity why they're spartans blah 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 instead of doing that right off the rip so yeah that's what i think of the first two episodes the return of the halo tv show season two it doesn't make me want to hop into a coffin and die of cringe. It's also not a, a major improvement. They have the potential though. I'm going to keep watching because I'm interested in what's going to happen around Reach. It's a very notable place in Halo lore and the entire story. So the fact that we have something tangible to look forward to instead of like season one where let's watch Master Chief uncover his past and we don't even know who the fuck he is and let's watch him go back to his childhood home and touch all these artifacts. We're building towards something much better, I think. And that is probably the biggest improvement. That and Master Chief putting on his armor and his helmet and keeping it on in action scenes. But what do you think of the Halo TV show season two? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man signing out. Peace.